What's up? Just thought, um, I'll give you a little look at my workshop where I do a lot of my, you know, sharpening of the blades, some of my work that I do. Um, you know, lawn care is what I do, but my passion is carpentry and I love power tools of every sort. Um, I have another channel that, you know, I do a lot of other stuff with, like on the carpentry side, you know, building stuff. You know, I do reviews of power tools and stuff. A couple of you guys are subscribed to it. Um, my uh, boy Whipping Grass, he's into tools also and mows lawns. So uh, they can appreciate some of this stuff, you know, but I don't actively promote it or anything, that channel. It's totally something different than my lawn care stuff. But um, I built this workbench around a month ago now. So I built this just out of two by fours and plywood. Two uh, kinds of wood, two by four by eights, and uh, some plywood, and um, came out awesome for me to say, in my mind anyway. But um, yeah, so I'll show you a couple things I got on here. This is what I sharpen all my blades with. It's a Ryobi uh, bench grinder, six inch. Um, yeah, this was twenty nine ninety nine. Um, I see a lot of guys out there they uh, sharpen their blades with. Oh, they people use all different kinds of stuff and they all work, which is cool, you know. But you know, you know they they put attachments on their power tools, uh, which is cool. You know, it works fine. They make these little rotary attachments. Uh, they're good to to have. Like I always keep a impact driver in my car, ready to go with a, a socket um, adapter on it so you know if I got to take the blades off my mower real quick I ran over something and something happened just go back in my truck take an impact out uh, take the blade off I have a couple spares and I'm uh, ready to go but you know I'm sure a lot of you guys have tools with you that you carry you kind of have to these days but um, anyway 29 bucks Bench grinder, Ryobi thing works awesome. Had it for almost two years now. Twenty nine ninety nine. I mean, some of these attachments that you spend money on and all that stuff. You know, by the time <clears throat> you spend your money on that stuff, because they only last a little while too. Some of these attachments, because they get dull and all that. I mean, these replacements here, right here. These uh sharpening wheels right there I mean I've had these on here for almost two years and I mean I use this this thing a lot and um, you know to replace these is like three dollars a piece so three six six bucks and I mean you should have these for a long time six seven eight years before you really unless you're using them think these uh, wheels every day uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know, I think this is the best route to take. I mean, everybody has their own way. Um, I kind of got a good deal on this. You kind of have to go and search online because, you know, I searched online twenty nine ninety nine. I had to order this from Home Depot. But in the store, they have a different model that's forty nine ninety nine. So, but it's the 8 inch. And um, it has a little bit more bells and whistles to it. But this is all I need, man. Right there. I don't even know if they make this one anymore, but I love it. If anyone wants a real, um, you know, economical bench grinder, you know, because literally I sharpen a blade in three, uh, you know, for my 52 inch Hustler or my 42 inch Husqvarna. I mean, I could, I, I could sharpen those five blades in literally 90 seconds. All of them. Boom, I have them stacked here. I go three times on each side. Um, you know, get a nice little sharp brand new edge on it. I'll do a video and I'll show you how I sharpen my blades in the next couple. I need videos for the fall, guys, for the winter and stuff. So 
I got to keep busy. So I'll, I'll make some during the winter and in late fall and stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this really leaves a nice sharp edge on your blades. Real sharp. It's real quick. And, um, I don't know. I think it's the best way to go. My opinion, you know, all the ways work. I don't want anybody to get hard feelings. You listen, I'm just giving you my opinion. Nothing's, you know, everybody has their own way that they like and it works. But I found this to be the best way to do it. Um, you know, I got shelving underneath here. Um, I have my chainsaw under here, but I have it in my truck right now. That's why this is wide open here. But this thing is stacked to the gills, usually with stuff. You know, I got my cooler under there for the summer. Come, I kind of don't need that anymore. You know, some Bosch stuff. I'm a big Bosch guy, big Makita guy. They're my top two. Uh, a lot of guys are into Milwaukee and the wall, you know. They're good stuff, too, but... Over the years, I've come to like the uh, Bosch and the Makita set of tools. I got a little 12 uh, volt Makita drill here, and I got their 18 volt impact. Uh, when I'm working here, I put some tunes on. Got the old Bosch. This thing is great. This is like a an amazing, amazing tool. Not only you know you got your music, plays your MP3, blah blah blah. You know. Hook up your phone to it. You pay your Pandora box, Pandora, whatever you want to play. But this is what it's awesome. You got four. Um, of course, you can't see it. Son of a bitch. But it's four outlets here. You know, regular, you know, 320 volt. Let me see if I could put a flashlight on this real quick for you. So I really love this thing. Well, I'm here. This is the one I usually take on the road with me. This is my little Ryobi. You know, I'm an old man. I don't really listen to music too much. I like sports talk radio. I like WFAN, Boomer and Carton. I listen to that in the morning. This thing is awesome. I've had that for years, man. Thing rocks. I got a new one down here. I haven't even opened. I got this with one of my kits. It's a Bosch little uh, compact radio, but... I'm going to, this might be a little bit of a longer video, I can just see I'm on almost 8 minutes already, and I haven't even talked about anything. But when do I ever talk about anything that's important, right? Oh, alright, so, there you go. So I got my four outlets, you know, sometimes I'm running, uh, I have a mixer. I got into seal coating this year, um, up here, I love doing driveways. I've had a probably, I did like 10 or 11 this year, the most I've ever done. Kind of dabbled in it the last couple of years, but this year it kind of went a little crazy. But I put one of these mixing, I don't use it on this drill particularly. Actually, I use, here's my other little toolbox here, in case you're interested. You know, I got a Milwaukee 12 volt impact. This is, a real, this is the best tool DeWalt makes in my mind. It's their brushless. I'm moving all my tools to a brushless. I love them. I love the brushless line. This is their XR DeWalt. But I hook up uh, a mixer adapter to this. And what I do, it's a big long mixer. Put the battery on. And you know, when you get this seal coat stuff, for you guys who deal with this, you know, I got the mixer, man. I, it mixes this stuff up real nice, man. So I add water to it, of course. I don't. Uh, I wouldn't be making anywhere near as good money if I just would take, you know, use this as is and do someone's driveway. To be honest with you, it doesn't spread well unless you add water. Um, and it looks it's something. It doesn't look. It's too dark and it's too thick, and it kind of looks like it's like cut like a big paste coat. Like, a, it's just not, you got to add water to it, but that's besides the point. Anyway, so, but getting back to it, I got this nice adapter where I put a mixing, you know, it's probably like three feet long, and it mixes that stuff up. Uh, but anyway, yeah, why I'm saying that is then when I do, when I do concrete also, so sometimes I got to power my batteries, I got the radio going, you know, I got these chargers right here, plugged in right here. 
And I got all kinds of stuff going. You know, what else do I have going? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, sometimes, um, I, you know, like someone asked me, you know, any good deck guys? My steps went on my deck. I'm like, yeah, I can hook you up. I, I do it myself, man. You know, why give that money or that stuff to other people, you know? Nothing crazy, you know, I'm not insured to be doing any kind of crazy woodwork, but I got a couple steps out, you know, I try to hook them up, save them some money, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll run something like this, a miter saw, I got this thing uh, going to it, but, um, yeah, so this thing's great, you know, you got your four outlets, this is a cool little flashlight, I'm just showing you a whole bunch of junk over here, but, um, yeah, then I got some... Here's my impact wrench. That thing is the bomb. But I'll tell you, today, these impact drivers are so powerful. Like this this one, right? Like these two, real quick. One, two. One, two. See that? Uh, these things are like 16, 15 to 1,600 inch pounds of torque. You know, nothing like this impact, this impact wrench. I'll show you real quick. I don't know if I even ever did a video on that, but this is what I use to take most, of, not even anymore. I used to use this specifically to take the blades off my mowers. You know, this is a heavy duty, you know, 200 foot pounds of torque. Foot pounds, not inch pounds. But you know what I find, like I was telling Mo, I mean, you can really strip your bolts when you put your uh, your blades back on. This is almost like too much power. I mean, this is really to take lug nuts off like a car. These can too, though. They're that powerful these days. These little impacts that weigh like 2.2 pounds, they can now take uh, lug nuts off of cars. It's crazy. Look at that. Brush lift. But, um, yeah, so this year I kind of I haven't used this as much. I do use it now and then. You know, when I bolted all my... Uh, stuff on my trailer I had to use, you have to use something like this you really got to get them bolts on there real tight so this is what you know you can use that for stuff like that um, you know, I got a couple impacts I got a drill it's a cool little Makita drill there's all my tools DeWalt, DeWalt makes great hand tools you know screwdrivers you know Phillips flathead all that kind of stuff uh, I got Ryo, Ryobi I love Ryobi, man. Ryobi's, uh, if you guys don't know, the same company that owns Toro um, owns uh, Ryobi. Um, and but anyway, great, great value company. They make great stuff. Listen, all this stuff I have here: Makita Bosch, Dewalt, Milwaukee. Ryobi is just as good. Just as good. I've had Ryobi for years. And I never had any issues with them. But, you know, I kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. There's no real reason for it. I can't sit here and tell you, Ryobi, you know, a Bosch. I mean, besides having different qualifications, you know, different strengths and torque and stuff like that. I mean, they're pretty much all the same, you know. I mean, some features are different, you know. But anyway... Getting back to the Ry Ryobi, uh, their um, stuff like this, like their drill bits, their adapters, they suck. I'm not a big Ryobi fan. This speed load kit was a waste of like 10 bucks. It's garbage. I had to go buy a different one. Uh, DeWalt makes great, like I said, hand tools. Milwaukee and uh, DeWalt make great, you know, drill bits, titanium drill bits. Don't get the black oxide ones. This has really turned into a big tool type of... Uh, video which I didn't want to do but you know me but yeah DeWalt and Milwaukee make great you know adapters bits uh stuff like that uh sockets I have a DeWalt set of uh high impact sockets half inch amazing um I also have one right here this is half inch these are short though I got the long nosed ones this little thing right here this is all sockets in here but they're they're not, they're deep, they're not deep impact, um, yeah, I don't know why I'm drawing them, they're, they're heavy impact, but they're not as long, 
as my DeWalt's, which are, you know, they're longer, these are shorter. So, um, you know, they come in all kinds, you know, one-fourth, three-eighths, half an inch, you know, that they all, this is a half inch head on this uh, Ryobi here. I don't like the three-eighths and the one-fourth, they're just too, they're too small and I don't know. I just like the one half. This is pretty much as big as you can go. I think they do have three fourths, but not really on cordless type stuff. Um, but yeah, I got a uh, angle grinder. Like this thing is, like I said, right here, real quick. This Ryobi angle grinder right here. Beautiful, right? Forty dollars. Forty dollars works perfect. Has the same amount of torque as a Makita, as a Bosch, blah, blah, blah. Great. Could take a beat in. Um, here's my vice I just put in, too. This is a little Bessie. My Bessie vice. Great. Got it. Home Depot. I don't know. 30 bucks. But, you know, getting back to that. And then I got... I'll show you. Like right here. A real... Comparator. Then I got my Makita brushless uh, angle grinder. I love angle grinders, guys. I use them all the time for a lot of my stuff, woodworking. Um, you know, sometimes when I do my seal coating jobs, you know, oh, this piece of asphalt here, man, I don't know, it's all, you know, worn out, looks like garbage, looks like shit. You know, is there a way we can get rid of like that big asphalt, you know, chunk? You know, and, and make a nice... You can use one of these angle grinders to cut through asphalt. Make a nice clean cut. Uh, you know, I did one... This woman was so happy. Just, wow, I can't believe oh, you could do that. My God. What what what, what, what kind of saw did you use? Do you use like a, a, a wet saw? Or like a diamond blade? I'm like, yeah, I used an angle grinder. Now, she didn't know what the hell it was, but... Yeah. There's so many... Um, applications you can use these angle grinders for. They're not just for grinding down metal and stuff like that. They could be used as, you know, to cut. I've cut branches with them. You know, my chainsaw ran out of gas on a couple, I mean, last, last summer, and I had my angle grinder in there for some reason, and I cut some of these branches off this lady's tree, man. I went up there with this angle grinder. Boom. That recip saw too, man, right uh, down here. You can use them to cut wood, and they're great tools. But anyway, you know, this will do the same thing this does. No difference. You know, maybe a little bit, you know, it might feel a little better in your hand, you know, stuff like that. But torque-wise, this one might have a little bit more torque. I mean, it's brushless. So the thing with brush brushless tools is they're going to last longer. They got a little bit more torque off the immediate trigger pull. You know, that, that instant torque. And, you know, you can dr drop brushless tools in like a pool. Yeah, I could drop this in a pool. And as soon as it comes out of the pool, it's ready to go. You know, you don't. I don't recommend doing that. You don't really want to get these things wet. But this would probably work too. But I don't know. This would work again. It wouldn't be ruined. But you have to wait for it to dry out. You'd have to wait two or three days for everything to dry out. Then this would be fine. You know, I can't sit in a pool for like two, three hours and expect it to work, even with the, with the brushless tools, but, um, you know, no, this, this video is just not even about anything now, but anyway, here's my workbench, um, you know, I do a lot of my stuff, you know, for, for the business, uh, here, you know, so, um, and this is, I had wood left over, I know, uh, Mo, my man Mo knows about this. Um, I had some uh, wood left over. It looks really dark, man, in here. Let me use this flashlight again. But, um... This thing's dead. Anyway, I had some wood left over for the, from the workbench. So I made this little table. I have no rhyme or reason to have made it, but I had extra wood. I had some extra plywood. I had some extra... Actually, these, the legs on this table are, are my old ramps. This is what my old ramps used to be. And I used to put my stuff in my pickup truck 
you know, the days I didn't put my trailer, hook my trailer up, I would use with these wood ramps. You guys know about my new ones I got last year. They're underneath there. They're my uh, metal folding ones. So I had this these wood lay, laying around. I had ramps. I cut them, you know, three three feet, and I made a little table here. It's cool. Got some more junk on here. You know, these are those Ryobi bits. They suck. They're titanium, but they they then I I don't recommend them. I can't do it. Can't do it. But yeah, so there's my miter saw. I'm coming on over 20 minutes now. I'm doing like a Dan from Trimmers video here, man. This is like crazy. Man. Dan, I don't know how you do it. But uh, yeah, I got all this stuff out. You know, see all this wood. You know, all this spare wood here. And, you know, there. I got wood up here. Going crazy. I'm building myself a fire rack. This is um, pretty much what it looks like. Um, you know, I don't have any kind of wood burning stove or fireplace in my house, but I do like to have people over and I have a fire pit that I built. One day I'll do a little video of the fire pit I built a couple years ago. Still holding up strong, but um, anyway, so I'll, I need a place to store my wood. I have an enclosed porch that I've really just. It's a beautiful area, and it's just filled with firewood now, and the old lady pissed off. So I'm like, all right, I'll just build a firewood rack. So, yeah, six feet long. This could fit about a half a cord. This is the front. I shouldn't be doing this at night, right? You're like, man, you can't see anything. But, yeah, I really can't. But here's the top. It's six feet tall this way, down to five feet. It's going to be pitched with a roof. Right there, just like that. See my hand? That's going to be the roof. And then down here, I'm going to put some cedar boards. You know, and then along the back. And it'll be real nice, you know. These things are four, five hundred dollar, man. Some of these, these firewood racks, man. I'm like, no way. It's time to get into action, man. So... So far, this thing's cost me about 60, 60 bucks. When it's all over, probably around 80 bucks. But I'll, I'll actually I'll show you a video of it when it's done. I've been working on it for the last two weekends, but I really have had no time with the kids' sports and working and everything. And it's been raining on the weekend, but this weekend's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna play some golf and then uh, work on this puppy. But uh, yeah, so. I got all this extra wood here. I'm gonna build like a little bench, you know, sit, you know, like a, you know, little long bench for people to sit on. I don't know. We'll see. I might not have enough wood. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I got a lot of scrap wood. That's what's all back there. But anyway, so um, here's the old workbench, man. I used to have a little tiny one. Uh. A couple months ago, I've been planning to do this for a long time, uh, build a workbench, but I finally got it done last month, and it's awesome, it's easy to do. If anybody has any questions about building a workbench, let me know, I'd love to help you, tell you exactly the way to do it. Uh, like I said, this is my, my passion is this kind of stuff. I love woodworking, I love power tools, you know, monos, you know how bonos? You know, back in the 80s, my era, Bo knows football, Bo knows baseball. Well, Mo knows my little passion here, but yeah, I think it came out good. But this is where I do all my stuff here. Um, yeah, that's about it. So, uh, any comments or questions, uh, let me know. And uh, I'll answer them best I could. I thought I'd get this video out while I have no mowers in here. I got the old Husqvarna in the trailer, which obviously you can't see. And my uh, Hustler is at my uncle's. So that's about it, man. Oh, this thing's really cool too, man. This DeWalt, it's a multi-level workshop. It's like 90, 89 bucks at Home Depot. It closes up 
I have a video on this. I have a video on a lot of this stuff if you guys are interested on my other channel. Uh, Road, Road Rippers. Uh, it's just, uh, don't ask me why I picked that name, but I did. It was kind of going to be like a car channel with like woodworking, with like tools and... You know, but I did a review on this. I ain't gonna go into it. But if you're interested, I have something on my other channel about it. But this thing's great. For a hundred bucks, you could pretty much fit all your tools and something like this. If you don't have a big garage, and you really don't need like a workbench, and what's great about this, it has wheels on the back. It's almost like luggage. This thing is like a luggage. I, if you're interested in something like this, I'm trying to check out my uh, my video. It, it, I go over it in detail. But there's wheels on the back of this. Um, this thing right here. You had to hit a button. I'm in a bad spot here. Right here is a button. Push. You push the button. Pull up. And it's like luggage, man. Boom. See that? See that? See that? And now you have wheels in the back. You can wheel this to wherever you want to go. You're working at someone's house. You pick it up, put it in the back of your truck. Wheel it over to wherever you got to work. It's awesome. Kicks, kicks butt. But... This thing is so heavy now, but no, I could I could still move it if I wanted to, but I don't. I got tool bags, and I try to keep stuff in that when I got to travel with tools. But I'm gonna be doing helping my friend put a roof on. I'll probably bring this whole thing. I load all my tools on the bottom there. I got my Dremel and recip saw, all that stuff, and I'm ready to rock. Here's my box on my radio. This thing's the best. Actually, until uh, October 31st. If you like this thing, it's called the Powerbox 360. It's 129 bucks. Here's all the info. It's got a subwoofer. It's got. It's freaking amazing, man. It's usually 199 bucks. You can charge all your your phone. It has one battery on the bottom. You just put your battery in. Uh, in the back, it charges the battery of your Bosch tool. But when you have a battery in it, you'll see these four speakers. One, two, three, four. Then on the bottom, there's this big subwoofer. But this is like the digital media center. You can plug in stuff here to charge. And you got a thing for your cigarette lighter if you got to use that. But uh, if anybody's still watching this video, I'd be shocked. But yeah, here's all your stuff. You know, USB port, auxiliary two. You can put your SD card in here. Um, it's freaking awesome. This thing is the best thing. Um, it's really light. Um, you know, if you have any questions, just let me know. But in the back, that's where you put your battery. Like in the back here. And you can charge like two batteries at a time. Um, I just love Bosch tools, man. They're the best. Bosch, man. But, alright, I bored you guys enough. Uh, any comments or questions, let me know. And I should have this fire rack done this weekend. I'll, I'll do a little uh, video of what it looks like when it's done. But... Yeah, and if anybody wants a table for free and lives in my area, this you guys, anyone, you can have this thing. I built it with a lot of blood and sweat. Actually, the actual blood. I actually cut myself on this edge here, but now it's all I, you know, with my orbital sander. It's all you won't you won't be uh, hurting yourself. But you know, I put a couple, two coats of this awesome stain it's a polyurethane and stain mix uh, i did mahogany bombay mahogany it's got a real nice color to it but i don't really need it it's taking up space um i wish i had the space because it's great for stuff like this but i don't have the space but anyway all right any comments or questions let me know it's my workshop workbench later